In C.S. Lewis's Space Trilogy, we see the dismissal of the Gnostic tradition. As we discussed with Seraphim Rose, as well as both Jakob Tabez and Eric Vogelin, humanity through science attempts to perfect itself through gnosis in a transhumanistic sense. Science fiction, Gnosticism, and transhumanism can somewhat be seen as synonymous in this sense. The belief that humanity can be perfected beyond its imperfect state and become a god with a little g, of course, is inevitably forced to reject God with a big G, who Gnostics see as the Demiurge and thus revolt against in a Promethean fashion. As we discussed with Tabez, Prometheus is, according to Lessing, the spirit atoning for all of humanity, being the archetype of man against the god Zeus. Kant cannot resolve the contradiction and splits Prometheus and man into phenomenon and noumenon. Prometheus is bound, and man is set free. Aeschylus is Prometheus unbound, and Shelley's Prometheus unbound. Both see Prometheus set free from his shackles. Prometheus essentially becomes Satan, as portrayed in Milton's Paradise Lost to Shelley, as well as Jesus, because of the way both Prometheus and Christ suffered for humanity. In another work of science fiction, it was Robert Anton Wilson's Prometheus Rising that used Timothy Leary's Eight Circuit Model of Consciousness, which, as we discussed in our Serial Experiment Lane series, was a way to connect the world to the wired. With this, and by abandoning his body much in a Landian crypt-like manner, the antagonist, Arai, believed he had become a god, much like in a Gnostic sense. The book also deals with Korzybski's general semantics and Leary's concept of reality tunnels, a scope of subjective relativism akin to our own postmodern crisis. There is the inevitable push towards progress, along with the idea that evolution is being subverted by those along the lower levels of Leary's consciousness model. In a Landian sense, this order will be disrupted by the internet accelerating information to the point where no one can any longer control or grip the quote-unquote truth in their grasp. In the Discordian sense, everyone becomes a pope. The map is not the territory like Pemulus stated in David Foster Wallace's novel Infinite Jest, as the Escachon calculates each tennis team's final outcome. Accelerationist thinking attempts, of course, to accelerate the Escachon, seemingly in the Gnostic sense. In Lewis's trilogy, it is by abandoning God that the National Institute of Coordinated Experiments, or NICE, N-I-C-E, attempts to create a dystopian landscape due to demonic influence, or as we discussed with Jacques Ellul, a totalitarian form of technique, which, as Tolkien noted, takes on a form of magic that manipulates the masses of men away from the enchantment of fairies. Imminent perfection outside the concept of transcendent God, which of course cannot be conceptually understood, proves a foolish philosophical folly. As Seraphim Rose stated, science fiction is a powerful form of propaganda, and though C.S. Lewis created a science fiction series to show the same, humanity continues to push along the evolutionary path towards the age of the Holy Spirit as Joachim of Fiore foolishly foretold by the Promethean promise of liberating life from the shackles of servitude. In our current age, where Nietzsche's last man reigns supreme, it is no surprise to see everyone subscribing to a new Superman on wish to worship, fighting fire with fire. What totalitarian techniques will unfold for the Gnostic future, glowering away from God as man seeks the coincidentia oppositorum, the philosopher's stone, on all the pathways to Occidental eschatology. What other future could such an unintelligent species foresee for itself? Perhaps Dietrich Bonhoeffer was right, and that stupidity will always outweigh evil, since we are defenseless against it.